on this fourth Sunday of Easter. We want, I want to welcome you to beautiful St. John's Episcopal Church in Troy, New York. If you're visiting here for the first time, I'm Mother Judith Malionic. And I am Deacon Paul. It's uh, lovely to have everyone here this morning. And as a reminder, um, please join us for a uh, coffee hour online uh, after this service at approximately 1115. You can find the link on St. John's website. I hope that you've been able to print out our bulletin. If not, uh, I'll be saying the names of the hymns and the numbers and the prayer book page number that we are on. If you'd like to be receiving our e-blast, please be in touch with the office. The offertory that we have today uh, represents the gifts that have been brought by and mailed into the office, and we are very grateful for your ongoing support of the parish at this critical time. Gary Nelson has raised $875 toward his $250 goal for the crop walk. So thank you for your participation in that, and there's still time to be walking today. Our service begins on page 355. Our processional hymn is two, hymn number 210, The Day of Resurrection, hymn number 210. desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son, Jesus, is the good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name, and follow where he leads, who, with you and the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson this morning comes from the book of Acts. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The appointed song for this morning is Psalm 23. It will be said uh, responsibly by whole verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his namesake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second lesson comes from 1 Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is number 343, Shepherd of Souls, Refresh and Bless, number 343. Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. 
According to John. Glory be to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever, whoever enters by me will be saved and will come and go out and find the pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. I love fourth Sunday of Easter because on the fourth Sunday of Easter we always focus on Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, has been an important idea in the life of the Church from the beginning. The three oldest depictions that we have of Jesus from the early church are of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, found in the catacombs of Rome. Artists have depicted him in every medium in the centuries since. But recently, in the last 60 years, researchers have discovered a new importance for this image. I'm speaking of a long and fruitful experiment on the religious development of children, which became a method of religious formation called the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. This experiment began with an unassuming biblical scholar in Rome by the name of Sophia Cavalletti. A friend of hers, aware of Sophia's authentic Christian faith, asked Sophia if she could spend some time with her children, giving them religious education. Now, Sophia had no children of her own and knew nothing about children. She was doubtful about teaching children religious education at all. Are we giving them something that they really need? Or are we just imposing on them something that is important to us? Is religious education needless or even a burden to our children? And so she told her friend no with some regularity before finally consenting just to demonstrate how little she had to offer. Now what surprised Cavaletti was the children's depth of interest and engagement and she agreed to meet a second time. This began a 50-year religious educational experiment with children in which she soon was joined by Gianna Gobi, a trainer at the Montessori Institute in Bergamo, Italy. 
Cavaletti and Gobi built on the few religious works that Maria Montessori had developed, and they built on them by placing before children of various ages numerous passages of scripture with hands-on materials representing these passages, as well, as well as many elements of liturgy, asking, what is it that enables the child to draw near to God? It was not enough that these choices seemed good to the adults, or fit with the theory of child development, or a theological perspective. It was not enough that the child could cognitively understand what was being said. Cavaletti and Gobi looked for signs of deep joy, contentment, and peace, and evidences that the child had found something that they really wanted. They recognized a silent plea from the child Help me to draw nearer to God by myself. If the presentation filled a real religious need, they noted, the child would want to return to the material afterward and work with that material on their own to continue and deepen their meditation. To their surprise, they found that the interior lives of young children were deeply serious, and only the most essential truths of our faith would satisfy them. If you want to help children draw near to God, Cavaletti wrote, you have to draw near to the vital nucleus of things. The child will lead you if you know how to observe them. Cavaletti and Gobi found that the children's encounter with God in the presentations would be expressed in their words and in their art. The children often had profound insights about God and our relationship to God that no one had told them. Cavaletti and Gobi discovered spiritual stages of development and religious potentials and potencies in children that had been previously unidentified. Catechists around the world, in more than 30 countries where this has been done, have reported the same results when children are given this catechesis. Profound joy, contentment, and peace, deep synthesizing insights about God, and remarks and artwork that indicate that they have indeed experienced God's presence and heard God's voice. Now at the heart of this curriculum is Jesus, the Good Shepherd. In today's children's sermon, Kate Berlot presents the Good Shepherd as he is presented in the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. While she reads from scripture, she uses a hands-on wooden material, which has a sheepfold and figures of a shepherd and 10 sheep. Children as young as two and a half year, years old are drawn to this presentation of the Good Shepherd. Indeed, while ch young children are capable of understanding many passages of scripture, the stories of Jonah and the whale, David and Goliath, Noah's Ark, they do not evoke the same sense of deep satisfaction and connectedness with God as the parable of the Good Shepherd. For children, the Good Shepherd is the way into the life of God. They easily recognize in this passage his faithfulness, his loving care, the friendship that he offers, the protection he gives. They hear his voice and they draw near in trust. At the Christian Family Montessori School in Washington, D.C., where my children attended into their elementary years, there was a little boy who lost his father to cancer when he was five years old. Now, the school 
had the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd as part of its curriculum. So alongside all the usual academic materials were the religious materials, which the children could choose to work with throughout the day. After his father died, this little boy spent much of his time with the Good Shepherd material. In fact, he spent so much time there that his teacher wondered how fruitful it really was and would invite him to do other works. And yet, he kept refusing or soon returning to the Good Shepherd. Finally, one day, the teacher overheard him exclaim, I know you are with God, and I know you are with the Good Shepherd, and you will never die again. You will never die again. And then he left the work. It did not return to it for the rest of the year. This parable was the gate through which this child could enter into God's presence. He drew near in trust, and in grief, and worked through his father's death in the company of the Good Shepherd. The first time I encountered the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, I was in my 20s, worshiping with a small ecumenical Christian community in Washington, D.C. One of their members presented the parable of the Good Shepherd to the children during worship, calling them all to the front and using the wooden material with the sheepfold, shepherd, and sheep. As the small congregation watched the presentation, I was struck first by how engaged the children were in the presentation. Then I observed that we adults were equally intent. And then I realized that something deep inside of me had been touched, something that had been long neglected. My own journey with the catechesis of the Good Shepherd was born at that moment. I was trained as a catechist, no, not knowing if I would ever work with the children in this way, but knowing that I needed this formation for me. Through this training, I was able to walk through my own childhood again, revisiting my spiritual development and receiving religious formation through each spiritual stage that had been largely overlooked when I was a child. I am not the only adult to experience this training as important for my own religious formation. Many adults get trained in the catechesis thinking that they are preparing to work with children, only to find that they themselves are receiving life-giving and healing religious formation. Mother Teresa of Calcutta recognized the value of this training as religious formation for her nuns, all of the nuns in her missionaries of charity are trained in the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, not only as a tool for ministry, but as essential religious formation for themselves. And so on this fourth Sunday of Easter, I invite you to tune in to Kate's children's sermon to glimpse what is in store for St. John's as we walk through the gate. For he came that all of us, from a very early childhood on, might have life and have it abundantly. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed.
We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Send down upon those who hold office in this state and nation the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice, that with steadfast purpose they may faithfully serve in their offices to promote the well-being of all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and relieve those who are sick, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in their love and care. Sanctify, O oh Lord, those whom you have called to study and practice of the arts of healing and to prevention of disease and pain, especially Edith Addo Barbaria, Ivana Addo, Dr. James Aaron, Rose Bernard, Megan Bussing, Shirley DeCamp Thompson, Jennifer DeWolf, Jared DeWolf, Teresa DeVille, Olivia Haynes, Marie Jo, Dr. Patricia Jolly, Kyle Molesky, Catherine Prout, Cindy Schmiel, Kathleen, Kathleen Shanley, Matt Shorter, Linda Thorberg, Dr. Lisa Thorne, and Heather Tongarello. Strengthen them by your life-giving spirit, that by their ministries, the health of the community may be promoted and your creation glorified. Give insight to medical researchers, that they may discover the treatments and vaccines we so sorely need at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember before you those who suffer and want and anxiety from lack of work. Guide the people of this land so to use our public and private wealth that your generous provisions may extend to all people, that all may return to suitable and fulfilling employment. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may be served them in Christ and love one another as he loves us. We pray for our mission partners in Las Cahobas, Haiti, for St. Paul's, St. Anthony's, and Troy Area United Ministries, and for other partnerships here and around the world. We pray for those in our parish who have asked for our prayers, especially Gary Haight, Alan, Barbara, Randy, Charles and Margo, Dawn, 
David, Erlene, Mary, Tish, Father John, and Colleen Kelly. We pray for those who have died, especially Sergeant Randy French. We commend them to your mercy, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Continue. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Continuing on page 360. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that we have sinned against, against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We, we have, have not loved you with our whole heart. We, we have, have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And then we wait. Our service continues with our offertory hymn. In number 304, I come with joy to meet my Lord. In number 304.
page 372. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and we glorify your name as we sing. reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that, in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord. We pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit 
a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. John, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us to stay our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. reminds us that if one is unable to actually consume the consecrated bread and wine due to extreme sickness or disability, the desire is enough for God to grant all the benefits of communion. When being present at a celebration of the Eucharist is impossible, this act of prayer and meditation can provide the means by which we can associate ourselves with the Eucharistic action and open ourselves to God's grace and blessing. Please pray with me. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me, a most merciful Redeemer, friend, and brother. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more dearly, Day by day. Amen. Amen.
Our post communion hymn is number 667. Sometimes a light surprises. Number 667. sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Jesus our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. To the Lord bless you and keep you. To the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. To the Lord give you his peace. You're going out and you're coming in. You're lying down and Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing, number 344. 